What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Google's I.O. Day 1 keynote just ended and they unleashed a ton of hardware, software, and some stuff kind of in between. So let's go ahead and recap what you can expect from the Android Maker. So if you see me look down, it's because I got a lot of notes. They went through a ton of things. In fact, I have three full typed pages of Android goodness to share with you. Let's go ahead and get started. So first they announced some updated Android specs. Android is now activating, or Google is now activating, 400 million uh, handsets. So that's since Android started in existence. It was 100 million last year. It is 400 million right now. Uh, that is a tremendous number. Uh, breaks down, they're activating now 1 million devices a day, uh, which if you want to go even further, is 12 devices every second uh, are being activated. That is just a crazy, crazy, right? You look at how many Android phones there are on every carrier, and then you go unlocked. It is just a slew of little green warriors uh, marching. Um, so developing world is adopting Android even faster pace. So obviously we're seeing those rates uh, go up and up and up. And then they said it's time for something new. Uh, so Google's operating systems tend to keep a dessert flavored theme in alphabetical order. Um, so we have you know, cupcake, eclair, donut, froyo, gingerbread, honeycomb, ice cream sandwich. And now we're on to J. And J stands for Jelly Bean. Uh, it is not Android 5.0, as some might thought. It's 4.1. It's an incremental uh, upgrade. We talked about the specs. You'll see that it just refines what we have in Honeycomb without, or without within Ice Cream Sandwich, without reinventing uh, what they did with the 4.0 release. So let's talk about all the stuff that uh, Jelly Bean has to offer. I'm so used to saying Ice Cream Sandwich. It's also kind of funny too, because most phones now are just starting to get Ice Cream Sandwich. Now Jelly Bean uh, is unleashed. All right, so first it builds on what was created with ICS. So that was uh, pretty obvious. Uh, it started with something called Project Butter, which is a funny name, but actually makes sense. Uh, it's a performance-focused mission to make the UI quicker and smoother. Get it? Smooth like butter. Uh, so now as soon as you touch the phone, it sort of kicks up all the processors. Essentially what they're trying to do is get rid of uh, what's been called Android lag to make it really quick, really fluid, you know, one-to-one -one motion of your finger. And from demonstration, it looked really good. Uh, new home screen management. Uh, you can now move apps and widgets a bit easier. If you drag a widget over to uh, your home screen, it'll resize itself based on the amount of space that's there. If you want to get rid of a widget instead of dragging it up to remove, you can just throw it off the screen. Kind of a fun way to do it. Uh, definitely a minor software tweak, but certainly nice to uh, have in there. All right, so on the keyboard side, we have more improvements to the dictionary. Uh, better predictive text, better predictive text, um, which would be pretty nice. And one of my favorite features is actually offline um, voice dictation. So before, if you wanted to use the voice dictation, you had to be connected to a network and send it up to the cloud, decipher what you wanted to say and send down the text. Now that's going to be stored in the kernel um, of Jelly Bean. So if you're in airplane mode or bad service, you don't have to worry. You can use it now and tell your phone, send text message period to Ralph period, do stuff period, uh, and it'll go ahead and, uh, and do that for you. So really nice to folks that use uh, the voice dictation feature. Um, cameras as well. So one of the things you saw in Ice Cream Sandwich was much quicker picture taking. In Jelly Bean, we now have much quicker picture viewing. So between taking the picture and being able to view it, you get a cool animation, and you can go ahead and swipe over and get that picture much easier. Just a little bit of a quick added thing that they've done. All right, so in addition, we have some improvements to Android Beam. You can now Android Beam more stuff, and that's just using NFC to transfer information. Uh, new notifications. So notifications are still the same. They pulled down, but now they do a whole bunch more. Uh, they show more information. You could take two fingers, pull them down. You could show pictures in there, and you could actually have more information being displayed. You can call people back uh, for notifications, uh, quick responses for certain things in there as well. Um, Kind of, again, small, incremental, but definitely welcome uh, additions to the Android operating system. Uh, also, now updates to search. Certainly, it's being made by Google. Got to be big in the search world. Uh, so there's a new UI, uh, and it uses sort of a cards um, sort of format, like we see when you search with Siri. Uh, it pulls in, presumably it might even be Wolfram Alpha. It'll pull up a whole card that gives you information. So instead of just showing a text result, you get now a whole screen uh, that will pop up. Uh, voice search, now similar to Siri, it talks back to you. So you can say, what's the weather? And it'll tell you the weather. The voice that it's got does not sound nearly as robotic as uh, Siri or S voice. It actually sounded more human-like. I'm very curious to actually try it for myself uh, and see how it worked. But it looked like it uh, functions very, very nicely. And uh, something now also called Google Now. 
going to personalize results and Google learns from your habits. A little bit creepy, um, but uh, it's going to be there. And you're going to hear a lot about Google now, well, right now, and probably in the future. Um, so the big question is, when is it going to be available? Uh, it's going to be available in July as an over-the-air update, initially for Galaxy Nexus, Nexus S, and Zoom uh, tablets. The so same operating system for phone and tablets. The rest of the phones out there, it's kind of a question mark. You know, you look at the Galaxy S3 that just came out, the HTC One X, two flagship phones with cutting edge specs. Now I don't have the latest operating system, uh, which is certainly a bit on the annoying side. That might sort of deter people from which phone they're going to buy. Uh, we didn't see any new phone announcements. There wasn't a Galaxy Nexus 2 or Nexus's Nexus device, Nexus size, made by different manufacturers. It's the same hardware. Uh, I was hopeful that Jelly Bean was going to help reduce fragmentation, uh, but it seems to just be increasing uh, the fragmentation that Android is fighting against. So next, let's talk about Google Play Store, the former Google Android Marketplace. A lot of stuff going on with Google Play. Uh, they've got over 600,000 apps and games. Uh, there's now going to be app encryption. Uh, so apps are going to be tied to devices so you'll get a little safer um, experience in the Google Play Store. Uh, you're going to get smart updates too. So it's only going to push down uh, the delta, which means it's only going to update the changes to the application. Before, if you wanted to update an app, you had to actually re-download the entire APK. Uh, now it'll just download the changes, which is going to mean less bandwidth being used if you're using cellular, uh, and less battery consumption, and quicker updates. So certainly very, very welcome. Um, that'll be supported on gingerbread and above devices. Um, next, Google Cloud Messaging. They didn't talk that much about it, um, but it sounds very similar to iMessage or BBM, a service we can go from Android to Android devices and probably from Android to Android tablets. Hopefully some sort of desktop application coming soon as well uh, for messages. They didn't say whether or not it was going to still use data, if it was going to be text. Um, more information will be coming on that relatively soon. Uh, movies can also be purchased from the Play Store. Uh, magazines are also coming to the Google Play Store and you're going to get 14-day free trials to popular magazines. So you can figure out uh, uh, what you want to read. And now, let's get to the hardware. They rushed through the software because they had a ton of hardware to talk about. Uh, this has been probably one of the worst kept secrets in the tech world. In fact, we broke the story of what the specs were going to be. Google announced the Nexus 7, which is named so because it is a 7-inch tablet. Um, so it's being built for uh, the new Google Play and it's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. From a spec standpoint, uh, we did nail it. A 1280 by 800 HD screen. It's being powered by NVIDIA's latest Tegra 3 with quad core, which will be pretty nice. You're going to get a 12 core GPU in there as well. So you're going to get a pretty cutting edge gaming experience. I'm a big fan of Tegra 3. You also get access to the Tegra zone, so you get a lot of dedicated apps uh, that are optimized for Tegra devices. Uh, front facing camera, no rear facing camera uh, on this guy. It only weighs 340 grams uh, and is rocking NFC, so you get your you know, Android beam uh, going on. Uh, it's got something called the What's the Song button that works like Shazam. You hear a song playing, play it, and it'll tell you, hey, that's Maroon 5, moves like Jagger, or whatever song you're listening to. Um, we'll pull up right there. Uh, it's also going to be the first device to ship with Chrome as a standard browser. So, bye bye, standard globe looking default Android browser, Hello Chrome, uh, which is now officially out of beta and is ready to be downloaded and used as Google's hoping uh, your browser of choice it will though ship on the um, Nexus 7. Uh, there's a new redesigned YouTube app for tablets as well. It's the same sort of YouTube experience you get on the desktop. At least it looks the same, um, but now it's going to work on the tablets, which is huge. Uh, I never really liked the YouTube experience on Google devices, which didn't make sense because Google owns YouTube. You figure it would be awesome. Uh, I was always preferential to the way iOS handled YouTube. It looks like Google has realized that and addressed it, and the new YouTube experience on Android looks to be pretty awesome, so I'm hoping to get a chance to take a look at it soon. Videos presumably will all play in HTML5 as well, so Flash won't be um, necessary in order to run it. Of course, Android devices can still run a Flash. Uh, there's new maps overlay for tablets uh, as well. You can also now do maps offline. So if there's an area where you visit quite a bit, hit a button, it'll store all that map information on your device locally. So if you're you know, on a Wi-Fi device, like let's say the Nexus 7 doesn't have a cellular radio and you want to use the maps feature, you can go ahead and save the maps for your home location right on in there. Uh, Google Currents has been updated as well for the Nexus 7. Uh, it's optimized for the tablet and you can change languages, which is kind of cool. They showed uh, a magazine being translated from English into Arabic uh, immediately. So if you speak multiple languages and you want to read what's going on, 
uh, in a different part of the country. So they used Arabic, for example. If there was uh, an Arabic newspaper I wanted to translate, I could download an Arabic and translate to English, and hopefully be able to, you know, it would do a decent enough job that I could get the gist of what was being said. So pretty cool. Um, big deal for gaming uh, as well. They showed two games, Horn and Dead Trigger. Gaming looks as it would on really any Tegra 3 device, so looks awesome, look great. Get on a 12-core 12, 12 GPU, uh, you would certainly expect that. Uh, so what's the price? They really nailed on the price standpoint. 199 bucks uh, for this guy, and that's going to be 8 gigs of storage. 16-gig uh, model, though, uh, also uh, will be available. Uh, you're going to get a $25 credit to spend on the Play Store as well. Uh, with that, you're also going to get Transformers Dark in the Moon on there. I haven't seen it yet, so if you want to watch it, or watch it with me. Uh, you could do that. Uh, it's going to ship in middle of July, but uh, you can actually pre-order that now uh, if you want. Link will be down below uh, if you want to go ahead and get your pre-order on. But that's not the only thing that you can pre-order. Uh, I could pre-order something else Google announced, uh, which we heard sort of rumors of. And before the keynote started, it uh, leaked out. This is a new uh, Nexus device. The Nexus Q, not the Nexus John Q, uh, the Nexus Q, which is Google's uh, answer to something like the Apple TV that does a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, so let's talk about it. Uh, so it's a small Android powered computer. It looks like a really cool glowing black baseball with a LED stripper on the middle. It really does look very cool. Uh, designed and built um, in America, they were pretty uh, heavy on touting. Uh, so it's going to plug directly into a TV or a stereo. You plug it into both uh, as well. Uh, you need an Android device to control it. Um, nothing is stored on the device. All it does is going to stream down. Um, so it's got dual Wi-Fi and internet. It's got a USB port on it. They want to um, encourage general hackability. That's a micro USB port. Uh, lights on the queue are going to change depending on the song. And also show a visualizer on your TV if you're playing on your television. Uh, you can sync up to multiple rooms with multiple Nexus queues. It works with music and movies uh, and YouTube. $2.99 uh, available for pre-order now. So a bit confusing. Essentially what it does lets you stream content. So if you got an Android device with songs on it and you want to play it, you can hit play on your Android device. It's not going to stream it from your Android device to the Nexus queue. It's going to take it from your device, send it up to the cloud, and it's going to stream it from the cloud, essentially Google Play in the sky, right to your Nexus Q. It'll do that for movies um, and TV shows as well. And it'll pick up right where you left off, too, so you get sort of that local sort of storage feature uh, without actually having local storage. Um, people can come in two different devices, so if I'm having a party and I got my Galaxy Nexus, and my wife has her Galaxy Nexus, and I start rocking some Green Day and she doesn't like it, she can go and put on some like Andrea Bocelli uh, and just take over uh, my playlist, and multiple friends can sort of do that um, as long as they're connected to the device, which is kind of a cool feature. $2.99 though, very expensive uh, price point, especially when you consider things like Roku on Apple TV that could be had for uh, potentially hundreds less. Uh, then they talked about Google Plus, the one year anniversary of Google Plus, 250 million people on it. Native tablet app uh, is coming to Android actually today uh, and iOS coming soon. Uh, native for the phone version, new events and features for Google Plus. Party mode, all pictures taken can be synced up for everyone to see, which can be awesome or dangerous. So be careful what you take pictures with, especially with your, uh, your new Nexus 7 tablet. Uh, and then things got even more awesomer. Uh, Sergey Brin, one of the founders of Google, uh, came on stage with Google Glass. And Google Glass is that heads up display, uh, glasses type thing that we've been seeing uh, him wear and hear a lot of rumors of. They had skydivers come down and bike riders go off the building. People rappelled down the side of the Moscone West Center uh, and essentially came right on into uh, the keynote. Um, so prototypes um, weigh less than many sunglasses, so people were worried they were going to be really heavy on the ears. Uh, they assured us that they were not. Um, and then things got kind of cool. Uh, Google Glass Explorer Edition uh, is going to be made available for pre-order for everyone that was attending uh, I.O. So if you're thinking, man, I wish I was at I.O., you didn't get off all that well, it's going to be 1500 bucks to get your hand on this, admittedly very, very, very uh, pre-production. Uh, set of Google Glass. Seems like they want to sort of crowdsource um, the QA. That's quality assurance of the device. See how it works. So 1500 bucks sometime next year uh, they'll be shipping. So we'll have one here in the Techno Buffalo office. Um, we'll tell you whether or not the future looks bright, not bright, whether or not we're all going to be wearing crazy glasses uh, in the future. Uh, and then things got especially awesome because they said, hey, we love Android developers. Everybody in the audience is an Android developer. Let's give you an Android developer pack. And that's going to consist of, there are 6,000 people in attendance here, uh, a Galaxy Nexus, 
So the same Galaxy Nexus that we had with a sort of a beta version of Jelly Bean on it. Uh, over there update though, we'll update it to the official version of Jelly Bean. Uh, a Nexus 7 with Jelly Bean already on it and a Nexus Q to everybody that was in attendance. And that, my friends, is three pages of notes in a nutshell. Uh, so what do you guys think? What are you excited about? Not excited about? Uh, Google Glass, Nexus 7, Jelly Bean. Are you really looking forward to it? You not? I'd love to hear your comments down below. And of course, stay tuned to technobuffalo.com. We'll have hands on with everything uh, that was announced as well as impressions and thoughts. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo and I'll see you in the next video.